Goop Lab is out and it is a snore fest. It's a fraud, it's a fraud, it's a fraud! Uh, I, I wouldn't watch it. Honestly, it's like Joe Rogan light. Well, you ever see the Jaguar uh, tripping out on uh, ayahuasca? Just replace the the bald buff dude with with a extremely white blonde actress and just have have her go like this for hours instead of actually asking follow-up questions. And they're being used in treatment. Renaissance of psychopharmacology, Zoloft. Psychiatry left psychotherapy behind of terrible side effects and really Right. 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 I mean the first four episodes, guys, they're not controversial at all. Um, as you'd expect from what is essentially a puff piece from Netflix, they basically don't address any of the substantial criticisms. All they do is make it seem like the Goop Lab is just asking questions, guys. We're just asking some questions, isn't it? Shouldn't we be allowed to ask some questions? So that goes on for four episodes. You have psychedelics, uh, Wim Hof on, you've got Goop's sexuality thing, you've got a fasting protocol, all that. Until you actually get to the, until they start to unload their normal crap on you, it's it's an energy healing summit or whatever. And then in the final episode, they decide that mediums exist and they're everyone's a medium. You're a psychic, you're an intuitive, you're a medium, we all are. And that's never really challenged because all you have is Gwyneth Paltrow once again going, oh. There's something to this. And, I and surrender. So it's all, I have a general idea of who I'm speaking with. You don't need a psychic medium to prove it to you. For the louder your volume switch is. Wow. Oh, yes, yes, oh, huh, hmm. Just like this extremely credulous, but never fully buying into it uh, person. And you might be wondering after watching all of it, I mean, if you don't know of any of their substantial criticisms, like what are people so mad about? This docu-series or whatever you want to call it was not that bad. But that's only because they didn't address any of the substantial criticisms. And it's really frustrating. So I just want to lay out for people why actually people are mad. It's not because they're exploring psychedelics, you know? It's not because they have Wim Hof on. It's because they're they have deceptive advertising uh, that hurts people and they're charging money for that snake oil under the idea that it's going to cure disease and they're still doing it. So let's contrast the two the two narratives, right? We have the Gwyneth Paltrow narrative, which we'll get to in a second, and we have like everybody else. So everybody else forever has been saying, hey, Goop, we really don't like that you're lying about what your products do and do not do. And that's pretty much what their crit the criticism has been forever. They've already paid an $145,000 fine for doing this, for deceptive uh, advertising, for misleading health advertising. They already paid a fine for that. But if you ask Gwyneth Paltrow, that's not what it is at all. So Gwyneth Paltrow's narrative is basically that they once had problems, but they fixed them all. So those are mistakes that we made early on that we don't make anymore, and we have our own science and regulatory team to vet everything. And now they're just being hated on because of because they're asking too provocative of questions, like talking about women's sexuality. Um, but then there are certain things that just, you know, I think, especially around um, female sexuality, it's uh, it seems to be an incendiary topic for certain people, which I find really interesting. Who's mad at them for talking about female sexuality? Who's, who's mad about them? Find me this huge angry mob that's mad about them because they're talking about, oh no, they're talking about females, oh no. The men are upset. They're so mad. They're so mad about it. No. People are mad about the pseudoscience. As I said, we don't do anymore, but. And Goop's whole thing of like, we don't do this anymore. Now we have a science team. Yeah, their science team is about as scientific as uh, Big Tobacco's science team trying to discover the, you know, the, the is there a link between cancer and cigarettes? That's That's what the thing is. Uh, because check this out, Truth in Advertising, a couple days ago, just released this report that, in fact, Goop Lab has not changed at all. They're still doing the same thing. So in, in one of their perfumes, which they charge $55 for, one of the ingredients they claim treats negative energy, anxiety, neurosis, and OCD. You can't do that, because it doesn't. It's not. It's not proven to do that. You can't say it treats this. I can't say, you know, drinking this magical water 
cures, you know, it, it treats cancer. It doesn't. It doesn't. So I can't say that, right? It's a lie. And people would be rightfully mad at me if I said that. Uh, so you can't say that this agar wood in your perfume is treating OCD. People are going to buy the perfume and like be like trying to cure, cure their... <laughs> Cure their OCD. They also sell this detox detoxifying super powder, which they claim uh, detoxifies your body of a bad diet, alcohol, stress, and environmental toxins by fighting the free radicals. Oh yes, the free radicals are back, and they're being fought by Goop's detox detoxifying powder super powder. Now, do they have any proof for that? No. So, this is what people are mad about. Uh, you're not going to find it in Goop Lab. Unfortunately, it's a gigantic disappointment and they don't address anything. So I'm just here to tell you why people are actually mad. No, it's not because of Gwyneth Paltrow's like warped narrative of, oh, they just hate me because I'm asking very risque questions. No, we hate Goop because you're saying an agar wood treats OCD. No, it doesn't.